In the previous tutorial, I did a brief overview of the Illustrator interface. And one of the areas I talked about were these workspace panels over here on the right. By default, right? And let's actually, let's look at that really quick. If you come up here, by default, the Adobe workspace is called Essentials. And if I click this down arrow, you can see a list of other types of layouts. I'm gonna click on painting, for example. Well, actually, let's do typography. I'm gonna click on typography, and you will notice the window options over here change based on what Adobe thinks would be best for doing typography. And if I were to switch from typography to painting, you can see it switches again to the workspace panels that Adobe guesses or assumes you might like when you're doing digital painting. However, I have found that we want to go back to essentials I have found that you want to customize this in a way that allows you to do multiple types of projects without having to switch workspaces that way you're more comfortable with where things are you get into uh, muscle memory habits I used to lay mine out a different way until this summer I was researching the new illustrator CC 2017 and I was watching some tutorials from this legendary designer Deke McClellan and he is a really good trainer on Illustrator Photoshop. And he went over his workspace layout. And it popped in my mind like, that makes sense. Why haven't I been doing it that way? So I'm going to show you how Deke does it. We're going to customize our workspace to match his. You might see me fumble a little bit through some of the early tutorials as this is a new workspace for me and things might not be where I'm used to. But in the long term, it's going to work out better and it's going to work out better for you to work this way. So I want you to be on Essentials. And just in case so we're starting at the same spot, I want you to click Reset Essentials. That will always reset to the saved workspace default. All right, And this is what it looks like by default from Adobe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to expand our workspace panels like this. And you can see that we have some default options here. And I want to get rid of some of these. One, libraries. So if you do not have a Creative Cloud account, don't really need libraries. So libraries is a place where you can store some swatches and some settings in the Creative Cloud. And any computer you go to, you can type in your username and password. And you can get access to those settings. But we're not using that in here. So I'm going to drag that off. I clicked on libraries. I'm going to drag the panel off into the open area here and I'm going to X out. Okay. I also don't want to use asset export. I'm going to click on that. What this handy little workspace is for is for exporting things for mobile devices and stuff like that. It's very useful, you know, if you're doing that type of work. We're probably not going to use it in here. So I'm going to pull that off and I'm going to exit out. Okay. Now we want to customize this a little bit. We want to take our swatches, all right? Our collection of colors. That's what swatches are. Swatches are kind of a collection of colors. I'm going to click on swatches and I want to drag it up here, right? See how this bar turns color and color guide have a blue outline around it. I want to be up there. I'm going to let go of the mouse and it's going to put swatches up there but i want swatches all the way to the left so i'm going to keep dragging so that i have swatches color color guide and i want swatches up first i want to move brushes and symbols they get used less often i'm going to move them over here into their own new column you see how i'm dragging it over and there's this blue vertical column line I'm going to drag it over there to see that blue vertical column. I'm going to let go. Oops. Actually, you know what? Let me go back. I messed that up a little bit. Let me move brushes back in. I'm going to take instead of the tab for brushes, let me move that back. I'm going to take this empty gray bar space and I'm going to move that up here and I'm going to let go. We don't want two wide columns like this because it cuts up our, it takes up too much of our work area. So I'm going to see that double arrow. I'm going to drag this back over. Actually, you know what? Let's just close it right up here. There we go. Close that panel. Now, let me pull my swatches up just up to the below the gray tones or grayscale there. Next, we want to, we're going to keep stroke, gradient, and transparency right here. Swatches is the first one, stroke is the first one, but we are going to 
select layers, make that first. And we're going to move graphic styles, right? So I'm actually clicking on the word graphic styles. I'm going above that little thin line so that I'm this group here that has the brushes and symbols is highlighted blue. I'm going to let go. It's going to put graphic styles below that. Now we need to figure out what to do with appearance. I'm going to move appearance right up here. And we want appearance. We want it to be stroke, appearance, gradient, and transparency. Then we want layers and artboards. Next thing we want to do is add some more stuff to this little secondary bar. So any workspace panel here, if it's missing, it's always going to be up under window. All right. All of these right here in alphabetical order are possible panels that you can have open or have over in your workspace. I want to select a line. All right. And we're going to take this whole align group right here. And we are going to move that right below, right? So it's its blue square. It's not part of this. It's right below. And now it's its own little kind of collection. Next thing, we might do some typing. We're going to do some typography at some point. So we want to come under type and choose character. And that's going to give us some options for typography. And again, in this little empty space here, I want to drag and put that right below that other group that we created. So it's its own group of three. And you can see these little thin horizontal lines separating out the groups. I'm going to come up to Window again, Type. And then this time, Character Styles. And in this little empty space, drag over put it right below. Then we're going to need window info. And this is info and navigator. They're kind of different things. So I want to drag window off. So navigator and window are separate. And I'm going to move window in its new spot below character styles. I want to open up window and document info which is info about our current document, RGB color, we're using inches, stuff like that. And I want to drag this with the eye, okay, with the info so that it's there. And we have our document info, we have our attributes, which actually we can pull off and we don't need attributes. And lastly, let's take the navigator panel and put it down there, okay? It's a lot of little changes, but it's going to allow us to work smarter. I also, before we save this, I want to make these layers. And the reason why we have layers so prominent is it is one of the panels we're going to use often. This right here is a thumbnail image of the artboard, but it's so small, we can't really see what would be on it if we were to draw stuff. So with this tab selected, layers, there's these three little lines right here. These are kind of our workspace or palette options. We want to come all the way down the bottom and choose panel options. All right. And we want our thumbnail to be quite large. So I'm going to change that from 20 pixels to 60. I'm going to click OK. Now you can see we have this nice large thumbnail. So we want to use this space for our projects throughout the year. I think it's going to make sense, it's going to allow you to work better. Um, with that said, we need to save it because this is no longer Essentials. If you were to reset Essentials right now, all that hard work would go away. So we need to make a custom workspace out of this. So down arrow, and we want to pick New Workspace. You can call this whatever you want. I suggest MacLab because we're working in the MacLab. We'll call this MacLab for our new workspace and click OK. And you'll notice the name has changed to MacLab. I can now switch to Essentials and reset it to back where it was, right? Got rid of all our hard work, but luckily we made this one called the MacLab and it brings it right back. Also, let's say you accidentally drag some stuff off, right? You screwed up on accident, you need to fix it. 
easy since we've saved this custom workspace. MacLab selected as a check mark next to it. We can come up and we can reset MacLab and it goes back to our saved format. So make sure you have that set up right. It will make following along with the future tutorials more better.